MMO RPGs or massively multiplayer online role-playing games are an incredibly unique genre of video games. Unique enough to be more addictive than cocaine, but that's content for another video. The most prominent factor of this breed of games is the breathing multiplayer experience. In other words, unlike classic multiplayer video games where you have to set up a multiplayer session to play with your friends, such as in most first-person shooters or in Minecraft, this world is always active with thousands of live players. When you're playing an MMO, there are always other players simultaneously interacting with the world as you are. And you can interact with them, talk with them, trade with them, you can fight bosses with them, and anything else the platform allows. Even when you're logged out of the game, there are still other players in the same world, the same server you are interacting with the environment. It's a living, breathing, real-time public world. Not only do players celebrate their love for these living universes full of action, beauty, and lore within the games, but they also meet up at conventions on a yearly basis to celebrate their love for these games. This includes BlizzCon, FanFest, CitizenCon, and numerous others. The attendees cosplay, hold contests, compete in esports, listen to the developers discuss the next step of the game, and of course, enjoy the game there together in person. MMORPGs are an incredibly strong, I mean strong, genre of games, having the ability to capture the appeal of gamers for decades. For example, World of Warcraft, one of the most prominent MMORPGs and even video games of all time, has lasted since 2004 and still maintains millions of players to date, although it's slowly declining for controversial reasons, but that's not really the point of this video. <laughs> Another one, Final Fantasy XIV, released 2010 and is still going strong 10 years later with millions of players and counting. So why bother? Why the heck bother? Why be so interested in a simple video game to the point of spending $15 a month for decades just to play it? Why travel the country, and sometimes even the world, just to celebrate the game with other players? What's the appeal of MMORPGs? Today, I'm going to cover 5 simple reasons. I think MMORPGs are so alluring and appealing, and unique compared to traditional video games. So here we go! Of course, a massively multiplayer online game isn't just going to have other players running around for no reason. But since that's the most central factor of an MMO, MMOs are going to make use of that feature to make it a primary way of progressing through the game. In MMORPGs, it's absolutely necessary to connect and cooperate with other players in order to get gear, progress through the story, and well, in general, enjoy the game. When the storyline comes down to fighting a boss, you must team up and cooperate with other players to defeat the boss. Through this most prominent social focus of MMOs, players have made best friends online. And in very few cases, people even meet their spouses on MMOs. It's really no surprise at all that people form such close connections on MMOs to be honest, if you really think about it. Let's say there's this almost impossible to beat boss in an MMO. In order to beat it, not only do you have to group up with other players, but you have to learn the, the mechanics of the boss. You have to form strategies with the other players on how to, uh, how to like, flip in, uh, uh, take advantage of the mechanics of the boss. You have to communicate with one another while you're fighting the boss, and when fighting, you may fail over and over. Maybe even be disappointed in somebody. But after you know you go through that trial and error and that pain together you beat that boss and you're all excited together so many mmo players know that feeling so well mmos are more than a game they're a way that people connect and make friends mmos aren't only a game experience they're a social experience but a social experience doesn't come with having a bland appearance on your character but these games allow you to express yourself through your character which brings me to my second point Another reason I believe MMORPGs to be incredibly appealing to players is for its expression. What I mean by that is this. In most games, especially single player games, you're given only one or a few character models to play as. In Zelda, you play Link. In Tomb Raider, you play Lara Croft. In Doom Eternal, you play Doom Guy. In most video games, you play as someone you may not want to, or someone who you don't have the freedom of creative expression through appearance with. There's no expressing yourself by who you play as in these games. But in MMOs, man, it's entirely different. 
In MMORPGs, you get the creative freedom to practically make your own model. In MMOs, you're put through a character creation process, where you can mold your character's face and body into what you want it to be. Mmm. Yeah. I'm gonna play this character so hard. You wanna be a buff goat from space? You can do that in World of Warcraft. You wanna play a cat girl that you totally don't play because you're a total weeb? You can do just that in Final Fantasy XIV. Elven hunters from the lush forest? We got you in ESO. Midgets addicted to crack? We got you in WoW. In most MMORPGs, you're playing a character that you made. This character is your own. Not one that someone else made. Not one that the developers made you stuck with. But one you yourself molded and shaped. Because of this, you develop a very personal connection with the character. You know this if you're an artist of some kind. If you produce something and invest a lot of time and effort into making it your own, you feel a sort of emotional connection with it. You feel as if it's an extension of yourself. Because, well, in a way it kind of is an extension of your creative mind. On top of this, you get the ability to dress the character with various outfits and gear to your aesthetic liking. You want to be a plated warrior with warm fire coming out of his armor? You can do that. You want to be a fisherman? You can do it. You want to be a mage with all the arcane knowledge in the realm? Do it, bro. Just do it. You want to be a weeaboo maid? You can. You can do it. You can totally do it. Okay, let's, let's move on. I hate... <laughs>kind of already touched on this in the uh, the first part of the video, but I think it's a very important factor of the long-term success of MMORPGs. That is the fact that the world in MMORPGs is living and active. What do I mean by that? And why is it important? Your curious little noggin may ask. Well, since you're so eager to know you little silly goose, what I mean is this. Not only is the world active when you're not logged in with other players, NPCs, and enemies, but the story is constantly progressing. Unlike classic traditional video games, where a story is pre-built to play through, then you find an end and stop playing. In MMOs, the story is constantly updating. While you're playing the game, the developers are working on the next part of the story, the next implementation for the game. In most MMOs, these are called expansions. Every year or two, an expansion will come out for the game, introducing new features such as races, classes, and mechanics, and of course, the next part of the story. I truly believe, I truly believe one of the most prominent reasons MMOs keep people on the edge of their seat is because they stir up constipation. <laughs> Sorry, my notes auto-corrected. I mean, anticipation. Anticipation of the next part of the story. In a lot of single player games, you will play through, reach into the story, and play another game. But that's not the case with MMOs. They leave you thirsting for more, wondering what's going to happen next. Which is why you should subscribe to my channel, because there will be future videos, and I'm trying to make you thirsty, you know? Moving on. There is simply so much to do in MMORPGs. You're thrown into a large world where there's so much to do. Think of it like this. Let's say MMORPGs don't exist, and you're looking for a game to play in your local GameStop. You want to try and find a game that suits your personality. You enjoy fast-paced things, so you go to the action game section. You're also a competitive person, so you try looking for a multiplayer game. And finally, after looking at your choices, you see one specific game that appeals to your eye. In gaming, you usually have thousands of options to appeal to your own interests. But what MMOs do is provide so many different things to do in one single game, to the point where that one game appeals to many different types of people. Not everyone does the same thing in MMOs, but they do what appeals to them. It doesn't matter if you like action or not. You can play MMOs in a more action-oriented way by raiding. Or you can play it more relaxed by role-playing and enjoying nice views. It doesn't matter if you like competition or not. You can play MMOs in PvP, that is player versus player, or PvE, that is player versus environment. MMOs have it all. They have it all. This, my friends, is why MMORPGs are successful. They're not just a game, they're a world of possibilities and a story to tell. A world full of beauty, action, expression, lifelong friends, and choice. MMOs aren't about the character you're playing as, MMOs are about you. Thank you. <laughs>